بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay, so today we will be starting from ayah number 217 insha'Allah ayah number 217 of surah al-Baqarah A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa ma anfaqtum min nafaqatin aw nadhartum min nadhrin fa inna Allah ya'lamu وما للظالمين من أنصار إن تبدو الصدقات فنعم هي وإن تخفوها وتؤتوها الفقراء فهو خير لكم ويكفر عنكم من سيئاتكم والله بما تعملون خبير ليس عليك هداهم ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء وما تنفقوا من خير فلأنفسكم وما تنفقون إلا ابتغاء وجه الله وما تنفقوا من خير يوفى إليكم وأنتم لا تظلمون للفقراء الذين أحصروا في سبيل الله لا يستطيعون ضربا في الأرض يحسبهم الجاهل أغنياء من التعفف تعرفهم بسيماهم لا يسألون الناس إلحافا وما تنفقوا من خير فإن الله به عليم الذين ينفقون أموالهم بالليل والنهار سرا وعلانية فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين يأكلون الربا لا يقومون إلا كما يقوم الذي يتخبطه الشيطان من المس ذلك بأنهم قالوا إنما البيع مثل الربا وأحل الله البيع وحرم الربا فَمَنْ جَاءَهُ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ فَانْتَهَا فَلَهُ مَا سَلَفْ وَأَمْرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَمَنْ عَادَ فَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَا وَيُرْبِ الصَّدَقَاتِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ كَفَّارٍ أَثِيمٍ صدق الله العظيم Once again, we are starting from ayah number 270. And if you look at the previous ayahs, they were about infaq, spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the rules of spending, the virtue and the benefit of spending. And then in ayah 268, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us how shaitan tries to stop us from spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then 269, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that you need understanding, you need hikmah to understand and to be able to follow the orders and the rule of the sharia. Because otherwise shaitan will always trick you and stop you from doing what you are supposed to be doing. So to fight shaitan, you need al-hikmah, you need the wisdom that came through Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of revelation, in the form of wahi. The highest level of hikmah is Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The same topic is continuing about the spending. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah 270 says, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ One thing that I must remind about today's topic 
It's a continuation of infaq, of spending. But we have to remember that these ayahs, starting from ayah number 270, and going all the way up to 274, after which the ayat of riba will start, which is also connected to this. But 270 to 274, sometime if we don't know the connection of the ayahs, understanding the meaning becomes very difficult in these ayahs, especially this section. So this is why it will be very important for us to concentrate on the connection of these ayahs, how these ayahs are connected, only through that we will be able to understand the true meaning of the ayah because otherwise it seems like one ayah is talking about one thing and the other ayah is always jumps all the way to something else and talks about a totally different topic, although it's all about infaq, but how did it go from here to there and from there back to here? So inshallah we'll concentrate on that also, on how the ayahs are connected. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he continues the same topic of infaq, of spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةً Whatever charity you spend, أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذْرٍ Or you make a vow, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ Allah knows about it. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارٍ For wrongdoers, there are no supporters. What is the main message of this ayah? This ayah is not telling us just a virtue. Like you don't see in this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us if you spend you get these many rewards or you get this or you get that. Nothing like this. All what the ayah is telling us is that whatever you spend, Allah is aware of it. And this is why Mufassireen, after this ayah, they tell us two things. They say that this is wa'dun wa wa'id. Many of the Mufassireen, they will end the topic at these two words. That's it. They end it there. Wa'idun wa wa'id. What does it mean? This is two words really explaining the theme and the real message of the ayah. And that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He says, whatever you spend, I'm aware of it. So it's wa'id, which means a promise of a lot of gift from Allah. I know when you are spending, so I'm well aware of it. When you are doing it with the good intention, in the right direction, in the right way, I will give you so much because I know it. You don't have to worry about whether anyone else knows it or not. I know it, so I will give you a lot. It's wa'id also. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning us at the same time that if you spend and your intention is bad, or you're spending haram wealth, or something is wrong in your spending, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ Allah is aware of it. So, it's wa'id and it's wa'id. It's a promise of gift, of return, of reward, and it's a warning of Allah's punishment also. So now, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَ Whatever you spend, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ Allah is well aware of it. So we have to keep in mind that spending is not something that I can spend with whatever intention I have in my mind, and if it is not good, then it's my money. I could spend it for whatever I want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is one thing. Earning and spending is something that every human being is responsible for everything that he earns and everything that he spends. Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimahullah was asked that if there is a person who could earn a lot, and by earning, he could spend on his family, he can spend more on his family, and then he can help the causes of deen a lot. What would you suggest for that person? Is better for him not to get into that business where he will earn a lot and then help people, or uh, is better for him to uh, not to get into it? Get into, uh, into it, or he shouldn't get into it? So Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah's response was, that if he is able to fulfill his needs and responsibilities without getting into that business, then it's better for him to stay away from it because at the end there will be hisab on it. At the end he will be judged for everything that he earns and everything that he spends in that business and through that business. So he said, why prolong your hisab and make your hisab more difficult? 
Remember, this is under the condition that the person is not able to fulfill, is able to fulfill all of his obligations and all of his responsibilities. Now taking this, and a person will use this as an excuse that, you know, it's best for me not to earn because I will be giving hisab. No, it will go the other way around, that you will be judged for not fulfilling the responsibilities while you were able to fulfill those responsibilities by working and earning. So, one side of it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, whatever you spend, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ Allah is well aware of everything that you spend, everything that you earn. So nothing that, okay, it's my money, I can do whatever I want with it. Wherever you spend it, if the intention is bad, you will be punished for it. If the intention is good, you will be rewarded for it. We remember the hadith that talks about, لَن تَزُولَ قَدَمَا عَبْدٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُسْأَلَ عَنْ أَرْبَعَ Every human being will have to answer four questions on the day of Qiyamah. No one can move from his place without answering these questions. And one of those questions, عَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ اكْتَسَبَ وَفِيمَ أَنْفَقَ About his wealth, where did you earn it from and where did you spend it? So this is a very difficult situation where a person will have to be questioned about every penny he have earned and every penny that he have spent. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiyallahu anhu, Hey Abdul Rahman, I was shown my people going into Jannah, which means Sahaba Ridwanullah al and this is one of the Al-Ashr Mubashira now, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiyallahu anhu. So I was shown all of my Sahaba, my companion going into Jannah, and I saw that you were 500 years, which is half a day of Akhirah, behind the rest of the people. He said, why Ya Rasulullah? He said, because Allah gave you a lot of wealth and you were held for being questioned about your wealth. So no difficulty, but being held was by itself is of difficulty on him. So Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, in that case, I feel like I want to give everything away because I don't want to stay behind on that day. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, don't do that. But... Spend as much as you can, whatever is in excess of your need, keep on spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this ayah is nadar. Now, why he mixed sadaqa and nadar? Whatever you spend. And whatever wow you make. Why both are put together? Before Allah mentioned, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ Allah is well aware of it. The reason is, of course, one thing we need to remember why even I'm raising this question, because nadar is not always based on spending on wealth. Nadar could be, I will perform 10 rak'ah nafal, I will fast for one month, I will sacrifice and uh, offer a sacrifice, uh, I will recite 15 Jews of Qur'an, I will, I will say tasbihat, uh, uh, say subhanallah 100 times. It could be any of those things, could be nadar. So why nether is connected to infaq here? Because people were in the habit, especially in those days. Even nowadays, some people from certain background, they are so used to nether that whenever they want any of their work to be done, they will make a vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, if this is done, then I will spend this much. And mostly, either it's about charity or about some sort of ibadah. So I will spend hundred dollars, I will spend thousand dollars, I will go for hajj, I will offer a sacrifice. So a lot of situations when nether is related to spending. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected nether also with this. And what used to happen, and I have seen this also in a lot of people, that they are used to making nether because this is how they have seen people in their culture always doing it. But after the work is done, then they say, you know, Allah doesn't need my, 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 my money. What Allah is going to get by me doing this? So they don't fulfill their vow. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذْرَ Whatever vow you mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of it. And if you don't fulfill it, Allah will hold you accountable for that. So whatever you make, what is nadr? Nadr is something that is not obligatory by Islam, by the deen, by the ahkam of sharia, but a person would make it compulsory on himself. 
For example, I will fast for the month of Sha'ban. Fasting of the month of Sha'ban is not compulsory. But this person took it upon himself and he made it compulsory on himself to fast for that month. Now he should fulfill it. I will spend thousand dollars. I will feed ten, ten poor people. I will send someone for Hajj. I will send someone for Umrah. I will offer a sacrifice. Now the person took it upon himself. It wasn't fart for him to do any of these things. But as he took it upon himself, he should fulfill it. When the person does not fulfill his vow that he made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will always see bad results of it at the end. This is why the scholars say one of the very important reasons for many children to be a very burdensome and trouble for their parents is parents make well that if Allah will give me a child or will give me a son, I will make him hafiz, I will make him this, I will make him be serving the deen of Allah. And once the child person gets the child and the child is growing up, Okay, let him finish this, then I will make him do this. Let him finish this, then I will make him do this. They made a vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah gave them what they were asking for, but after that, they did not fulfill their promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this child. And therefore, Allah makes the same child to be a burden and a problem for their parents. So it's very important that when we make a vow, we fulfill it. And... We do whatever we have said that we will do. Nadr. Islam does not like nadr. We need to remember this. Although we see, if you see the order of nadr, that if you do it, if you make a vow, fulfill it. Prophet ﷺ did not like nadr. And the reason for that is, nadr, when a person is making a vow, what is that? I'm saying, Ya Allah, if I pass my exam, I will give hundred dollars as a sadaqah. Rather than that, why don't I choose the opposite direction? I give hundred dollars as a sadaqah and make dua to Allah and then go for the exam. Rather than making a condition, putting a condition with, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah has given me the hundred dollars, I have the ability of spending hundred dollars later, spend it now. And then make dua, your dua will be powerful and you are not spending it with that condition, under the condition that I will only because my work is done. Now you spend it just because you want the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through that you're making dua to Allah that, Ya Allah, here I'm giving some charity, hopefully that will purify me, clean me, get me closer to you. And I'm making dua, Ya Allah, fulfill this need of mine. Many times people will say, I will fast for one month. Okay, start fasting now. Rather than making a vow that, Ya Allah, if this is done, then I will fast for one month. Fast. And during this period, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the better way. But yet, if a person will make another, will make a vow, he has to fulfill it. Very quickly, though we don't go into the detailed ahkam of the uh, fiqh and the sharia over here in the tafsir but very quick, quick reminders about nadr one is nadr will be in anything that is already established in as part of ibadah in our deen so it cannot be something that is not part of ibadah in deen which means if a person will say uh, if uh, this work of mine is done then I will take an aeroplane and go to the space there is nothing like this. So no need to go into the space. It has to be something that is already established as ibadah in our deen. And it cannot be anything that is already obligatory either. Because, Ya Allah, if, my, this, if I pass this exam, I will start praying Salat al-Zuhr every day. This is, this is nothing. You're supposed to be praying anyway. What do you mean, I mean if you will pass the exam, you will pray? And many times we feel I'm doing a great deed by saying that, okay, if this happens for me, I will go for hajj. If you haven't performed, if you have not performed the hajj, and this is farid on you, there is no nother about hajj right now. First thing you need to do your fard hajj. There is no nother about the fara'id. It's obligatory. You have to do it. 
it has to be something that about something that is optional and then even that optional thing has to be something that is part of ibadah is not something that is not ibadah at all you know Allah if I pass my exam I will eat lunch it has nothing to do with ibadah you want to eat lunch eat it you don't want to eat don't eat it so it has nothing to do with it the point is it has to be something that is already established as ibadah and number two it cannot be anything of the fara'id and again it said that sharia does not like another in fact likes the person to do it without placing a condition to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then if Allah helps him with that need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that this is best for him will make it happen for him but anyway if a person will make another or does make another should fulfill it وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ There is no helper for the wrongdoers that if a person does not fulfill his nadhar, does not spend at all in the way of Allah, and his, all of his expenditure is in a wrong direction, مَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ The wrongdoers will not have any supporters, any helpers. Now the second question comes, okay, I want to give the charity, I want to give it in the best way, I want to make it the most rewarding charity, should I give it openly or secretly? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah is answering that question. In tubdu sadaqati fani'immahi. If you make the sadaqat openly, it's good. Wa in tuhfuha. And if you keep it secret, wa tu'tuha al fuqara and give it to the needy people, fahuwa khayrul lakum. That will be much better for you. Wa yukafiru ankum min sayyatikum. In either case, Allah will forgive some of your sins through the sadaqat. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir. Allah is well aware of what you do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us both sides of it. In tubdu sadaqat fani'immahi. If you give the sadaqat openly, it's good enough. But it's always best to keep it secret. So the general rule is sadaqa of sir. Sadaqa that is given secretly is better than the sadaqa that is given openly. Now, this is the general rule. In some situations, sadaqa that is given openly could be better just because of that specific situation. The general rule is sadaqa to sir is always afdal. But for certain situations and reasons, the sadaqa that is given openly could become better in those situations. For example, some of the fuqaha say that if a person is giving out zakah. It's better to give it openly because when you perform salah, it's better to do it with jama'ah. Fard. Salat al-fard, we do it with jama'ah. Zakah is fard. So therefore, and when we perform fard with jama'ah, it encourages other people to come and join the jama'ah. So therefore, when you give zakah openly, other people will get the encouragement of paying the zakah also. Because many times people forget, they don't remember. So if a person will give it openly saying that this is zakah, so it will be better in that situation. But many others are of the opinion that is still even zakah is better to give it secretly, except if he wants to really remind someone, so only letting those people know that I have given my zakah or I'm giving out my zakah. Number two, some of the scholars say that if there is a person who is in the habit of asking people all the time. So maybe good to give him openly so other people know that, okay, someone has already helped him. So everyone won't just keep on giving him thinking that no one is doing anything for him. But if a person is not of the habit of asking, and sometime he came and asked, it's good to give him secretly. Also, Sometimes people need encouragement. Say for example, you are collecting funds for a good cause. And someone notices that people are not spending. People are not getting, giving, giving anything. So a normal person who is known in the community that his income is not too high, this is just living on a day-to-day -day basis, he gets up and he says, I will give $1,000. So now by this, other people who are known in the community to be well-to-do and earning good, mashallah, and they're making good money, they will be ashamed to say, I will, give, I will be giving 
Because this poor man is giving thousand dollars and you're going to give hundred dollars only. So this person may feel, okay, now I should give at least two, three thousand dollars. So in that type of situation where you want to encourage people to do khair, khair and to take part in spending, as long as this person's intention, intention is good, himself is good. If his intention is something else, that okay, now I, it's my chance. People will know that how generous I am. Or at least I will make them know that I'm a good person too. That will be wrong. As long as the intention is good. And the intention is to encourage others to give more. Or at least to give. That will be a good intention to give the sadaqah at that time openly. But as I said, it will, the sadaqah that is given openly, it will be because of a situation. And the person has to judge the situation. As far as giving secretly is always good. Secret sadaqah is always good. We may remember the hadith, which is in the sahah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions seven type of people that will be under the shed on the day of Qiyamah, under the shed of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ تَحْتَ ظِلِّهِ وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ تَحْتَ ظِلِّ عَرْشِهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ and one of those seven people will be Rajulun anfaqa tasaddaqa bi sadaqatin fa akhfaha hatta la ta'lamu shimaluhu ma tunfiqu yameenu a person who gave such a secret sadaqa that his left hand doesn't know what he has given with his right hand which means no one knows what he's spending also there is another hadith in in sunan at-tirmizi rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said lamma khalaqa allah al-ard when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the earth, فَجَعَلَ tamid, The earth started shaking. فَخَلَقَ الْجِبَالِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the mountains. And when He placed the mountains firmly in the earth, so the earth stopped shaking. So malaika were surprised to see the power of the mountains. How? وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادَ These mountains are like nails holding the earth in place and balancing it. So they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbana, أَخَلَقْتَ مَا هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ Have you created anything that is more powerful than the mountains? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Naam, Al-Hadid, the metal is more powerful. It can break the mountains. We see all the machinery that they use, the tractors and all of those that they use for breaking the big mountains and uh, uh, the big rocks, all um, out of iron, out of metal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that is more powerful. So they asked, Ya Rasul, Ya Rabbana, أَخَلَقْتَ مَا هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْحَدِيدِ Have you created anything that is more powerful than the iron? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Naam, النار, the fire. You put the iron in the fire, and it will melt. Ya Rabbana, أَخَلَقْتَ مَا هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنَ النار? Have you created any, anything that is more powerful than the fire? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Naam, al ma the water, it puts off the fire. Ya Rabbana, akhalaqta ma huwa ashaddu min al ma Have you created anything that is more powerful than the water? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Naam, al hawa the wind, it keeps on blowing the water here and there. Ya Rabbana, أَخَلَقْتَ مَا هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْهَوَىٰ Have you created anything that is more powerful than the wind? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, yes. Ibn Adam تَصَدَّقَ بِصَدَقَةٍ فَأَخْفَاهَا When a person gives a secret sadaqa that is more powerful than all of these things. Imagine the power of sadaqa. And no restriction of how much it is. Everyone according to his situation. To the extent, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam, اِتَّقُوا النَّارِ Protect yourself against the fire وَلَوْ بِشِقِّ تَمْرَةِ Even if it is by half a date. That's all you have, one date. Break it into half, give half as a sadaqah. Subhanallah, the habit of giving. See the habit of giving that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam developed amongst the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam. It's very unique. It's something that really we don't appreciate it. We don't even think about it. We don't realize what type of habit that was. It was a society where everyone is giving. No one is trying to take. We are living in a society where everyone is trying to take. 
No one wants to give. It's just the opposite. We will talk about it inshallah more once we get to the eye of riba. Over there we will see how there are two different cultures, there are two different qualities, there are two different habits of people. But here we see that how Prophet ﷺ is really making everyone in that society in that society to be the giver and wants to just give. Subhanallah, a person has nothing, nothing except one date. Prophet ﷺ says, don't eat the whole date. Don't eat the full date yourself. Give half of it to someone else. Beautiful society. Beautiful behavior, akhlaq. When people talk about behavior, about akhlaq, there is something that they miss. They don't even realize that it's, it's developing the uh, full society that will be of this habit of everyone wants to give something to someone. In another hadith which is in Sunan al-Tirmizi talking about sadaqat al-sirr, the sadaqah given secretly, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sadaqat al-sirr tutfi'u ghadab al-rabbi azza wa jal. When a person gives a secret sadaqah, it takes away the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah is upset with someone, someone have done something wrong, he goes and gives some secret sadaqah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets pleased with the person. Subhanallah. What could be more than this? We don't need any other reward. If there is no other reward, you really don't need it. This is just good enough that if I have done something wrong and Allah is upset with me, this sadaqah to sir will help me in my situation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that وَيُكَفِّرُ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَيَنْتُخْفُوهَا وَتُتُّهَا الْفُقَرَاءِ If you give it secretly and give it to the needy people فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ It would be better for you. وَيُكَفِّرُ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ And he will forgive some of your sins through the sadaqah. Min is telling us that if you give sadaqah once, don't think all of my sins are forgiven now. No. Min sayyatikum. Every time you give, some of the sins are forgiven. Then you give, then some more sins are forgiven. Then you give, some more sins are forgiven. Simply means get into the habit of always giving because we always are need in getting Allah's forgiveness. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir. You don't have to announce that I'm giving this much for you to write off your sins. People are doing it to write off the text. Allah is saying that, Wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir. To write off your sins, you don't need to tell people. Allah is well aware of it, and therefore He will reward you for it, and He will forgive your sins. Laysa alayka hudahum, walakinna Allah yahdi man yasha. Now pay attention to the meaning of the ayah, translation of the ayah. Allah says, Laysa alayka hudahum. It is not for you to guide anyone. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ But Allah guides whomever He likes. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِيَنْفُسِكُمْ Whatever good you spend, it will be for your own self. Now, as I said, if we really don't know the connection, you would start thinking, what is this now? Infaq, and then nadar, and then all of a sudden, the ayah is talking about hidayah. لَيْسَ عَلَيْكَ هُدَاهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ It's not up to you to guide anyone. Allah guides whoever He likes. What is the connection of here? And then the next part of the ayah again, in fact, what's the connection of hidayah with all of this? And this is where asbab al-nuzul play a big role in understanding the meaning, the true meaning of the ayah. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a suggestion that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also liked it. The suggestion was, Ya Rasulullah, how about we stop helping our needy family members and others around us that are not Muslims? And the reason they suggested this was because, Ya Rasulullah, if we start helping, if we stop helping them, hopefully to get help, they will come into Islam. Prophet ﷺ liked the idea because there were many of them over there who were fully supported by their Muslim relatives. So if they will not get that support, maybe they will consider accepting Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, لَيْسَ عَلَيْكَ هُدَاهُمْ It's not up to you to guide people. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah guides whoever He likes. 
وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِيَنْفُسِكُمْ Whatever good you are spending is for yourself. It's not for those people. Don't think you are spending it for people. You are spending it for yourself. وَمَا تُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ And you are only spending for the pleasure of Allah. If you are spending for the pleasure of Allah, why are you saying I'm not giving it to this person because he's not Muslim? That's not up to you. It's not for you to guide people. You are not trying to guide people through your money. You can't buy hidayah. Keep on helping your needy relatives even if they are not Muslims. Keep on helping your neighbors even if they are not Muslims. لَيْسَ عَلَيْكَ هُدَاهُمْ Guiding them is not up to you. If Allah wants, He will guide them. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِيَنْفُسِكُمْ Whatever good you spend, you are spending it for yourself. Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah narrates here that there was one of the sulaha. He used to spend a lot helping the needy people. And at the same time, he used to take oath and say, I swear by God, I have never helped anyone. So people didn't like that statement from him, that we know you do this a lot. You keep on helping everyone. And now you're even taking oath and saying, Wallah, I never helped anyone. You shouldn't at least take oath on this. So he recited this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِأَنفُسِكُمْ Whatever good you spend is for yourself. I'm not doing anything good to them. I'm doing it for myself. By me spending, they are doing a favor to me that at least they are accepting something from me that puts me in a situation where I'm able to do something for myself. If they won't take it, how could I help myself? What a beautiful way of looking at it. That when we are giving, don't think that I'm doing a favor to this person. This person is doing a favor to me by accepting it from me. What if he will tell me, no, I don't want to take it. I'm losing my reward. He's losing what? He's losing some money. But I'm losing the reward of sadaqah, of helping. So, for those people to accept it from us is also a favor that they're doing to us. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِأَنفُسِكُمْ وَمَا تُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ You only spend for the pleasure of Allah. If you're spending for the pleasure of Allah, then why are you looking, differentiating between who to give and who not to give? Anyone who is in need, give it to him. Remember, this is about sadaqat nafilah, which means charity that a person gives, not zakah. Zakah, of course, because it's a specific type of ibadah, it has to be given only to Muslims. But this is for infaq, which means general charity, give it to anyone that deserves this charity, always, which simply means help people who are needy. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ Whatever good you spend, you will get it, get it in return. You will get it full. Wafa. This tells us a beautiful meaning of wafa. يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ Wafa in Arabic means to get something totally and fully. Metaphorically is used for death. In reality, the word wafa in Arabic does not mean death. Here, يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam says, وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ الَّذِي وَفَّى Ibrahim that did everything perfectly. Allah is marking Ibrahim alayhi salam's paper after he went through the exam of all different type of tests from Allah. Sacrifice your son, leave your wife and your son in the desert, go back thousands of miles away from them and leave your family, leave your parents and do hijrah from that place. Subhanallah, so many tests that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam went through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end, when he's telling us what was the mark of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in that exam, he says, Alladhi wafa, who did everything, 100%. Subhanallah. If Allah is saying, he did everything perfectly, 100%, this is wafa. So, yuwafa ilaykum, you would fully get the reward of it. Nothing will be reduced, nothing will be missed. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ And no wrong will be done to you. The reason I pointed out this, 
Because sometimes people try to confuse you about the ayah related to Isa alayhi salatu was salam. When Allah subhanahu wa in surah al-Imran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Isa alayhi salam, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ And they translate this as, O oh Isa, I will cause you to die. No, Allah is telling him, I will take you fully. I will not just take your ruh, I will take your ruh and body both. Mutawafika. Otherwise, imagine the situation under which the ayah is revealed and Allah is promising Isa alayhi salam something. What Allah is promising from Quran, we know Allah is promising him is that inni mutawafika. I will mutawafika. We'll come back to the translation of it. The Jews of that time, who were the against Isa alayhi salatu was salam, they were plotting to kill Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Isa alayhi salam made dua to Allah to protect him against those people, against his enemies. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua. And he revealed, he told him, promised him this. If you translate this, Ya Isa inni mutawafika, O Isa, you are telling me to protect you against Jews, I will kill you myself. What does that mean? Is Allah helping him or telling him before they will kill you, I will kill you? That's not a help. That if someone is asking you to save him against other his enemies because they are trying to kill him, and you'll say, that's good. If they don't kill you, I'll kill you. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Inni mutawafika, I will take you fully. How? Rafi'uka ilayya. By raising you up to me. وَمُطَهِّرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And I will purify and clean you from all the disbelievers. So, wafa, this is why I pointed this out, that wafa does not mean death. Wafa means to take something fully and in Lisanul Arab. And many other dictionaries of the Arabic language that are well-known dictionaries, Imam Zamakhshari also in his book very clearly have stated that وَمِنَ الْمَجَازِ تَوَفَّاهُ اللَّهُ أَيْ أَمَاتَهُ That it's metaphorical word when we say tawafahu in the meaning of death, taking someone's ruh. Otherwise, in reality, wafa does not mean death. And this is the rule of any language that you don't take the metaphorical meaning if there is no need for it. You take the real meaning, the original meaning of the word. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ Whatever good you would spend, you would fully Get it in return. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ No wrong will be done to you. لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الَّذِينَ أُحْصِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ ضَرْبًا فِي الْأَرْضِ Again, pay attention to the translation and we'll see what is the connection. لِلْفُقَرَاءِ <coughs> Which means, صَدَقَات Your صَدَقَات Your charity should be for those needy people who are confined in the way of Allah. لا يستطيعون الضرب في الأرض. They are unable to travel in the land. يحسبهم الجاهل أغنياء من التعف من التعفف. The ignorant person considers them free of need because they abstain from asking. وما تنفقوا من خير فإن الله لا يسألون الناس الحافة. They do not beg people. Importunately, وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٍ Whatever good you spend, Allah is well aware of it. Now, what is the message of the ayah? Allah says your charity should be for الْفُقَرَاءِ الَّذِينَ أُحْصُرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ To certain category of people. Just now, Allah told us, don't differentiate. Give all the people. Give even the kuffar. So what does لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الَّذِينَ أُحْصُرُوا now means right after that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that you are allowed to spend and help anyone. But when it comes to priority, who should have the priority? Lil fuqara. Number one, fuqara. And who, even amongst the fuqara, who should be the people? See, many times we like to help rich people. We like to give big gifts to people that are well-to-do. So you go to a wedding of someone who is very well-to-do, you try to give a very expensive gift. Because 
After some time, your son will get married too, your daughter will get married too, and then that person will have to bring back a gift according to his situation. So, in simple words, we are bribing the person. And unfortunately, nowadays, I don't even want to go into that topic, but nowadays, beautiful way of begging. No boxed gifts. Simply means just give me cash. Just put no gifts. Why no boxed gifts? You don't have a place to put it? Distribute it. Give it out. There are a lot of people in the community. Give them that gift. You don't have places to put boxes? Give, just give it out. This, uh, this gift does not mean that you have to keep everything for your soul. When people are bringing the gift, mashallah, share it with everyone else. But no boxed gifts. Simply means everyone just bring cash. What a beautiful way of asking. Someone found someone on sale that worth $50, he gets it for $10, and you're telling him, no, don't give me that, give me $50. He wants to give you something that worth $10 according to his, his, uh, what he could afford. No, we are forcing. And it went even beyond this now. People even go to certain stores, and they register things that they need, and they say, get it from this, this, this store. I was so shocked when I saw that for the, first, for, for the first time in my life. I said, is this is the civilized way of begging? I have seen a lot of people going from door to door like this, putting their hand out. But this is a very civilized manner of begging people that, you know, go to the store and the person, the first people who will go, they will get the cheaper ones. And now the one who will go later on, they will have to buy the expensive gifts for you. This is gift. When you're telling people, give me this, Buy me from that store. I have registered why, what I need. I really wish if we can just change that into no gifts. Everyone come and no gifts. That will be the best way. You have no place to put it, no gifts. That's it. Anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lil fuqara. Charity should be the first priority is al fuqara and which fuqara al ladina uhsiru fi sabilillah those who are confined in the way of allah which means those people who are doing work of the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they in whichever form they are doing the work of the deen and therefore they have no means of earning as sayyidna abu dhar al ghifari radiyallahu anhu says that this ayah mainly refers to Ashab al-Suffa. Those were the people, 400 of the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, who were staying by the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would not work. They would not go anywhere else. They would spend day and night their time in the masjid to learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Sahaba, لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الَّذِينَ أُحْصِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ you only have something to spend. These are the first people you should look for. Go and spend it on these people. They are the highest priority. Because, أُحْصِرُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They are staying there. From, then they are abstaining from business, from work, from anything else. Because they are فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They are learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over there. So, mainly it was referring to Ashab al-Suffa. And through that, of course, other Sahaba Ridwanullah, other people also, who would do any kind of work of deen that is not allowing them to spend time to work for their livelihood. Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu, in fact, he says in the hadith, as Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah have narrated it, <coughs> he said, we, the people of Sufa, in the evening, we used to go by the door of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Time for dinner. We used to go by the door of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after Salatul Maghrib, he used to say to each of the Sahaba in the masjid, that take one person with you. Take one of these people with you, go and feed him with your food. MashaAllah. Beautiful. Because they have nothing else. They have no other means of having any food. So, each person take one person at least. If you can afford to take more than one person, take as many as you can. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu says, at the end, about 10, 15 of us would be left in the masjid. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to take all of us to his home. And we used to share the dinner of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa What was that? Generally, 
few dates and a glass of milk that we all will share with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what the ayah is about. This tells us that charity is good and charity anywhere is good. The highest priority is الَّذِينَ أُحْسُرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Those who, have, who are staying for fi سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They can't do anything else. They, can't, they, they are not able to, make, to earn and to make their livelihood because they are fi sabili Allah and they don't want to go away from what they're doing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we look where he used to spend his money, whenever he wanted to give charity, we will realize that generally Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's charity, sadaqa was given to these people. Alladheena uhsiru fi sabili Allah. La yastati'oona darban fil ard. They cannot travel in the land, which means for business, for work. They can't go anywhere. They're just staying there because, and the thing that is holding them back is not that they are not intelligent, they don't know how to do business, they don't know how to work, they have no way of earning. No, it's only because they are fi sabirillah and they devoted themselves for that. Yahsabuhumul jahilu agniya amin at ta'afu. Jahil. In our language generally, when we say jahil, especially outside of Arabic, when you say jahil, it's just like a curse word, that you're ignorant. But in Arabic, the word jahil means the person who has no knowledge, the person who doesn't know this field. For example, when it comes to medicine, I'm jahil. When it comes to business, I'm jahil. When it comes to a lot of fields of life, being the law of the country, I'm jahil. This is all jahil. We all are more jahil than we are alim. All of us. And every person in the world is more jahil than his alim. Which means we don't know a lot of things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَحْسَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُ أَغْنِيَاءَ مِنَ التَّعَفُّفِ The ignorant person considers them rich because they don't ask. لَا يَسْأَلُونَ النَّاسَ إِلْحَافًا They do not insist in asking. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ Whatever good you spend, Allah is well aware of it. Still there is some explanation needed. There are certain points in this ayah that we need to go through. Inshallah, we will try to cover it in our next session. أقول خولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين. مولاي أصلي وأسلم دائما